uh, you could possibly hold on to, um, you're not winning that game. So could be an important tech card, but maybe he'll just take a win right off the bat against this face hunter. We shall see. Semifinal one underway here, Neil. Oh, it's going to be I don't good. Know why. And this matchup is pretty close to 50 50 as well. Just this exact hunter versus rogue match. And so a massive one to start with. Gabby's feeling it. You can see he's back. The nerves of day one are either hidden or gone. And Glory, he's the champion. He's been here before. He doesn't feel nerves anymore, I doubt. Nope. This is just uh, another trip around the block for Glory. And another thing to point out, too, for what's at stake, this is a $50,000 match of Hearthstone. That's 100 GM wins. <laughs> that, that's insane. <laughs> you can play GM. How many weeks it takes you to get 100 GM wins? <laughs> if you're Gabby, like 100. But yeah, <laughs> it's absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. Oh, Ooh. both got decent starts, and neither of them have got terrifying starts. Gabby's is looking pretty powerful. Got to decide how wide he wants to go, how much reduction he wants to get, because the hunter does have that inevitability of the hero power, no matter what you do as the opposition. Yes. Um, <laughs> been so much debate in the uh, Twitter sphere um, on a specific... Uh, a sequence of plays involving both Octobot and Cold Neophyte that I can't shake it out of my head. Um, Octobot, really the only punish here would be... Actually, there's Doable. quite a few. Do, a do, uh, doggy Biscuit would also... Oh, Doggy oh, Biscuit! No. hi -ya! Uh, Off the top two, it is just good. And now Cold Neophyte doesn't even... Cha oh, okay. Okay. You're going to say it doesn't check the board, right? But with a pickup of the brain freeze, it checks yeah, the board it does. and slows everything down and was urgently required there. Yeah. Um, but, you know, this is not really the uh, <laughs> the biggest threat, right? The biggest threat comes with just the consistent damage that Glory's going to be able to put out. And, you know, Gabby going to be kind of a step behind having to use all these cards just to uh, be defensive in the early game. I feel like the Seeker Passage is going to be pretty huge if that can pick up some uh, some Temple Tools, but having a Garrote in hand that's early on, not great. Yeah, absolutely. He, um, I, I tend to watch with Rogue. If, that, if the no amount of mana for turn counter gets up to about 7, they tend to be in a great spot, but that's not quite true against Hunter because they're burning resources as they go. Ooh. Oh, Shadow Step. Okay. But not going to be able to use it. Instead, it's just going to go for maximum draw, but it doesn't really pick up anything, and it's going to take another at least six damage going into this turn, and his hand is very mediocre. <laughs> Glory went to play the War Song, and I'm wondering if the only thing to not play is because then Gabby knows you have a Rhino, and he's already got a Rhino. If Gabby leaves a minion up and gets rhino the game's kind of going to end. But yeah, Glory just going for the sensible play in the end. <laughs> yeah. You could try and get fancy, but to be honest, Gabby's not going to win the game without playing small minions. Right. And just having two rhinos in your hand, especially with a true aim crescent already equipped, um, <laughs> it's just the best way to, to, to end the game, to be quite honest. Because now Gabby just doesn't want, even want to play any of this stuff. But he has to, because he's got to win. So. I feel like we might see a weird play where he throws the grots out there, draws some cards, and hopes somehow to get there with, like, 15 cards in his deck. Hmm. He's going to kill this, play the field contact, and then step? Or is he just going to start groting now? Yeah. Yeah, just not leave anything up for the Rhino until he absolutely has to. I don't know. This is a difficult situation. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he has to. <laughs> oh, no, he's not. Okay, with the Shadow Step on the prize plunder, he's going to be able to keep the board clean. They're just setting up the Garot. Next turn, he can draw some cards if he gets a bit of spell damage, maybe. He might have a turn after this as well by keeping the board clear. Yeah, he knows this is massively unlikely. Yep. He just passes next turn, like, unless he has an amazing pickup and just tries to win on turn seven. 
Uh, it, honestly, it's going to have to be that, right? He can't leave oh. multiple minions on the board. Yep. He's going for just the, the cheeky get lucky. Uh, okay. So, like, he, he's he got two bleeds in the deck. Uh-huh. So it's it's five five Groat cast maximum. Uh, he needs three spell damage, though. <laughs> yeah. Or... Yeah, that's basically... I'm trying to work out if there's any world where he gets another turn, but surely not. Yeah, because if he just has plus two spell damage... It'd be 20. Um, because the original Groat has already been cast, so you can't add that. So it's only a multiple of five. Mm -hmm. um, and, th and that's in the world where he hits them. He's not going to draw his whole deck. So, yeah. But as it happens, we can see that it currently is not lethal next turn. Yeah, so he's just got to wait? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> he's got to pass the turn? Uh, and Gabby can't attack here? <laughs> Just pass it quiet. Because of explosive? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> the whole game is just shooting his own minions so he doesn't die horribly. Yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, there's no play, right? He's given it... Um, yeah. Shot of the outside chance there. Yep. <clears throat> There's a concede. And uh, just a solid start from Glory. The uh, uh, kill in the Octobot in the early game, which stalled a lot of Gabby's ability to go for a tempo play. Um, even if that, like, that secret passage was reduced, like imagine what he could have done. He would have had one extra mana. He would have been able to take it out the 5-1 as well as Shroud um, if things had panned out similarly. Um, that was pretty much the turning point in the game. And then, uh, you know, just the threat of the Rhinos. They ended up not even being needed at that point, but just the worst on Wrangler being played, forcing Gabby to keep the board clean because he couldn't take that much damage. Just a pretty cut and dry uh, game of uh, uh, Face Hunter versus yep. uh, Grow Rogue with Gabby not, even, not being able to get there. So, um, Glory 1 0. Yeah, and as you said, it could have been so different if that Octobot actually doesn't get killed with the top deck pickup, gets to trade, reduce some cards. It was quite a decent looking hand. Maybe Gary could have got some board, but that's just the game. That's the risk he took. He knew when he when he played the card, there's a good chance Glory just kills it anyway. He was already sort of, ah, oh, I suppose I've got to. He wasn't keen, but he made the right play. Glory made his right play, and it's 1-0. And the Hunter is out of the way. Yep, Hunter's out of the way. Uh, so that leaves Druid and Paladin. Uh, for Glory, uh, still left in the series. And Gabby has his own Hunter, as well as the Groat Rogue that we just saw and OTK Demon Hunter. Um, so if we look at that, it does feel like OTK Demon Hunter probably is the weak spot here for Gabby. Um, mm. Just because you're looking at Paladin, which can be super aggressive, right? They have Trogs plus buffs. Um, and, oh, man, I'm super excited. Look how blurry I'm getting already. Wow. Uh, just talking about Trogs just gets me all giddy. Um, and then e even if you look at uh, the the Druid, right, um, OTK Demon Hunter can sometimes uh, struggle against the Druid because, you know, massive armor gain, Celestial Alignment, which, you know, delays their combo by, you know, quite a lot. Um, it, it's just a, a, a lot to kind of get through in order to win that matchup. So Glory's just going to throw out the Druid here. Uh, we'll sp I imagine Gabby's either going to go for the Rogue or the Hunter in this instance. And the more this tournament's gone by, I, I, when I first saw Glory's lineup, I was like, ha ha, noob, you didn't bring Rogue. Why wouldn't you bring Rogue? Everyone brought Rogue. But it's just starting to look like that was a good idea. Of course, everyone's bringing yeah. Rogue. Everyone was able to take Rogue. Not take it down. It's not the sort of deck where you can just murder it. It's just too good. But he just didn't want to face all of the the hate that Rogue was likely to get in this tournament. Just built his own lineup. And it's working for him so far. And looking really good not having it in the deck. Which is weird, right? Because we used to talk in terms of how Rogue won every world championship. <laughs> Okay. Insta three keep. 
<laughs> I'm yep. pretty sure he insta three kept. Uh, just just hit the button, play these three yeah. cards, and get on with your life. Yep. Oh, and Gabby's going for the board. Look at this keep. He's just going to go for tempo. Yep. Which makes sense, because when you get aligned as rogue, you can basically do very little. So, near fight makes that a little bit more sensible, if that makes sense to you. Yep. It fits nicely into the curve. Job done. Okay, looks like he's going to, what, like, uh, Neophyte Aug Merchant? Oh, ho, ho, maybe not. Look at that. Wow, decision time This is Gabby. insane. Like, he wants oh. to Neophyte next turn just to stop down Overgrowth. Obviously, that's why he's waited, but... And he'll probably still do that, because if you hit and you stop an Overgrowth, it's just such a big deal. Yeah. But, wow, has he got options available now? Oh, yeah. How do you think he'll use these shadow steps? Like, there's the option to just keep shadow stepping near fights kind of forever at this point. Uh, he's just going to go for the ultimate draw turn next turn uh, before. Um, it looks like he's might be expecting overgrowth this turn. And then, so that means uh, next turn, uh, Neophyte's going to fit into the field contact uh, chain, which will block the celestial alignment. Um, so, uh, so far, things working quite... Is he going to double bloom Celestial? He's got the bloom lurking in the middle of the board. You can see the shadow there. It's hovering. Like a He's going to double bloom ever. Celestial. He's going to alignment right now. This is sick. Oh. Because Gabby had this all planned out, right? It, yep. He's like, okay, I don't need to Neophyte going into the Overgrowth turn. If he overgrows this turn, then I can Neophyte going into the alignment turn. And so, basically, that's Gabby's entire last turn, plus just his overall game plan, essentially ruined. That's a shadow step gone. The reductions from the Octobot gone. Well, and even though Glory's not going to have a turn here, um, because Gabby, double Gabby. bloom, he gets all the overload out right away. He could still play an Owl, because it's zero mana. But, yep. next turn, oh Gabby gets to Octobot and reduce everything in his hand to zero. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but then everything he draws is still going to be full cost. So, sure. yes, he can draw a ton of cards. Actually, getting the cold neophyte down here could be uh, pretty impactful. Uh, it's an, actually not really. <laughs> there's Look at the board. Contra. He's making a huge board. I'm not saying he's favored. I'm saying that this is this is no way as over as it looked from a turn, whatever it was, three or four uh, celestial, because he is going to get some board. But yeah, anaconda in hand on the other side, pretty terrifying. Yeah, okay. I, I actually can't find a way how the road gets a good result out of this now, but it more. <laughs> Double field contact action. <laughs> yeah, just <laughs> load, 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 <laughs> you load up the second field contact, like. All right, how uh, does he actually win from here? Um, everything lives, but nothing's going to live. <laughs> Everything's dead. <laughs> Even with the Neophyte, the Nature Spell still costs zero. And this so. must really hurt Gabby, not just because, obviously, he's likely to go 2-0 down, but this is kind of the deck that he got through the whole of GM with, the, the Druid in particular. And he didn't bring it himself, and it's been destroying him over and over again this tournament. <coughs> yep. Yep, those are great. Oh my god. Oh my gosh. All right. <laughs> okay. Yep. All right. How do I find an excuse for, yep. for Gabby winning now, TJ? Nope. I'm running out of excuses. <laughs> nope. This is. Yep, this is over. How about. I need Raven. I can't think of a way this could possibly be won. <laughs> Not even Raven, Ken. Sub in Raven. Time out. I need Raven to come up with some mysterious way that this can work. Cards. All right, we've got three mana. Cool. Draw a lot of cards with double field contact. Cool. Cool story, yeah. 
Yeah. Um, I've run out of story. I'm not quite sure how Gabby can do this, strangely enough. Scabs. Uh, scabs, okay. Scabs. Dory's back on. Yep. Still a lot to get through, though, and Gabby has used a lot of resources. Um, got to do it's 51 health. Yeah. Okay. I mean, everything's really expensive, but he also just has another alignment. He's got some owls. <laughs> He's got <laughs> survival of the fittest. He can also just Older. get to eight mana for next turn if he wants to as well. So much good stuff going on. So he can take he can take eight, right? He'll still in the world where Gabby. If you wake up in the morning, you found out that somehow Gabby won this game. Glory taking eight next turn isn't part of that loss. We are all connected from humble seed to heavenly star. And Gabby's got to at least put enough on the board to race. I mean, that's not going to work, but. Uh, he needs to buy time, doesn't he? I mean, he hasn't got time. He knows what's in the opposing hand. That's the problem. He knows he's in so much trouble. He's got to find a route to victory that's going to be incredibly unlikely. Yeah, just going to stall some damage here with the uh, uh, Scab's hero power. Not really much else to be done in that situation. Because uh, <clears throat> he effectively needs all of these cards in order to win. All right, there's Smite. It was only a single Celestial alignment played, but Glory here can just play down a massive uh, Brass Wing. Uh, it looks like he's going to hold on to it. I don't think there's a reason. It said play the Tormentor, but no matter what he does in that instance, right, uh, he's incredibly favored to win, and <laughs> Glory's like laughing to himself. He's like, okay, yeah, that was a cool game. Uh, three keep into the juice and take a dub. So Glory, 2-0 two, uh, two up now. And uh, this was the kind of situation just reversed that uh, Gabby found himself in um, and is on his path to get to these uh, semifinals. But we'll see if he can <coughs> have a different fate. And the, be the beanie went over the eyes. That's when you knew it was over. Yeah, is that when the brain starts to leak out of the beanie? <coughs> We, yeah, we decided that that's where he keeps keeps his enormous brain. Yep. Just about. I, I honestly, I I liked Gabby's game plan there. Um, I really did. Uh, it's almost impossible to expect double bloom celestial alignment because um, he, he did have a a chance to like not lock out the game, but do a ton on the next turn. He would have drawn through. I would say most of his deck mm -hmm. at that point because he had a, 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 a zero cost Octopod, um, the two cost field contact. He would have thrown a Colt if I in there uh, in that draw sequence, right, to block the Celestial alignment from coming down from the side of Glory because he would have been at seven mana. If Overgrowth was the expected play, uh, which he thought that it could be because it was a three keep, right, um, from Glory's side. So he probably thought it was the Jerry Reed Carpenter, Overgrowth, and Celestial alignment. So his plan made sense. Glory just had the ultimate punish to it with the double bloom into Celestial Alignment, uh, skipping Overgrowth completely. He didn't even have it in his hand, um, but uh, not even needing it in that instance. So, like you said, Paladin, last deck remaining here. Yeah, we haven't seen a lot of this in the tournament. We have seen a lot of this on Ladder. Uh, so most people know how this goes. Obviously, the Trog is the focal point, as you've got in those key cards there, because it's the newer card. But... Really, the whole thing put together, the carry all, the trog, just the, the Liban package was already reasonably strong. The Stonehearth Vindicator, again, you've highlighted. You've highlighted good cards, TJ. What's going on? 
Um, all of this stuff has just made Lib and Paladin have so much relentless damage and survivability all in one package that it's a really good deck for ladder. Obviously, we've criticised it, I would say, for this tournament to some degree because there's so much combo who just go, yeah, nice minions, and ignores them. But yeah, it, it seems to be working out okay. And it can do enough damage against the combo decks to get it done as well. It's not just a, a sitting duck. So interesting bring, one that I've got to confess I didn't like at the start, but the more I see of all the lineups, the more I see these matches panning out, the more I'm starting to understand it. Yep, and the biggest thing here is just to get those kind of unbeatable trog starts, um, or in a lot of cases against a uh, Groat Rogue, just to uh, get a, a, the Carol hero and you know limit the maximum amount of damage they can do. And like I said at the very beginning of uh, this match, the Rush Rot Viper in Gabby's list could be uh, quite crucial uh, in uh, at a later part of this game. Mm -hmm. And uh, Gabby starting on the play, which is going to end up being uh, quite good, which means, you know, this first threat, this Knight of Anointment that Glory is going to play, he could just dagger down. Um, thinking about playing the Octobot uh, in this case, because it's such a good hand, and there's really not much punish for it on the other side, even a hand of a doll. But I think it's going to take a little bit slower and just get the dagger loaded up. Dagger's really nice against the Divine Shield Trog. Just proc the shield, you've got the brain fees to finish it off. Reporting for duty. If, if that was to be a thing that occurred from Glory next turn. I quite like just playing it a little bit slow. And obviously, the longer you delay the Octobot, the more stuff you get from it, but the harder it is to get that stuff. Mana doesn't work out how he wants here. I think he's trying to work out if he can just kill this and reload. Way too greedy, surely. You talk about like augmentation. Yeah. Oh, just re or just re dagger. Okay. I don't think well, he that will. What's the play the next the following turn then? Octobot swindle. Okay. Then you're then you entering territory where it can be punished. Yes. Uh, because Glory plays a minion here, and then any sort of like double buff, right? Reporting mm -hmm. for duty. But Gory's hand is a whole lot of nothing, right? He's got a great play next turn. I uh, finally get the, these Librams essentially activated with the True Seeker. You see how quickly Gabby just wedged that near fight onto the board? I think that confirms what I was thinking, that he was going to play the Octobot, but what you said, he didn't want to play the Octobot. Um, the second he got the near fight, he just jammed it onto the board because that, that solved all those problems. Yep. Now the world is his oyster. Absolutely, he's could be as greedy as he likes now. He's going to be mega greedy by the look of it. Of course, he's got the shadow step. He's just holding onto this octopot forever. This dagger's done so much work over the first three or four turns because of the nature of Glory's hand. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I did mess up on the key cards actually. Just dagger. <laughs> yeah, it should have just been dagger. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing! <laughs> I, I, can you can you find a way to do that one day, TJ? I want to see it. Just all the hero powers in somebody's cards. I'll do my best. Cool. Okay, but this is turn. what Gabby was waiting for. Holy moly! Efficient is sufficient. <laughs> that is me stuff. There's a lot of stuff here, TJ. Stuff would you like? All of the stuff. He's gonna draw what seven, eight cards here. Next turn. Yep. Waiting for the right moment. <laughs> I mean, and this hand from Glory is. There's just no minions, right? It's double broomstick, plus all buff cards and a Lord Barav, uh, which you know Lord Barav can be good sometimes in this matchup, but everything's already low enough health as it is. Like, Blade Master Samuro ends up being uh, th that better type of removal card at many stages. Um, Gory does pick up a Trog. Uh, going to be a big Trog. Yeah. But, you know, with at this point, with Gabby having drawn through half of his deck, and with a lot of the, you know, 
Draw a sequence from field contact coming from minions and a brain freeze like already seen. Uh, it's hard to imagine that this trog is is uh, going to live. Prize plunder would be sort of the uh, uh, the bane of its existence. Yeah. Got to admit, TJ, when I saw submissions, or just before I saw submissions, I was hoping in some weird world that every single deck was just trog decks, just so I could hear you talk about trogs relentlessly for the whole, like, two days. Because I know you were dying to do that. Yeah, they didn't end up being as impactful as I thought they were going to be. I mean, yeah, at, at, at two players a little bit of time to get used to it. Probably. Because we weren't playing minions at the start of the, the, the trogs. It's like, how do you yeah. deal with this card? Oh yeah, I can, I can play a 2-2. <laughs> I could just <laughs> forgot about that. Play a minion. <laughs> yeah. Alright, he's done with that prize plunder. It's just in the way, filling up hand space now. He's got enough card draw. Everything else, he's got the second field contact, the second Octo. He's not dying next turn. This is looking fantastic for Gabby fans. At least, yeah, Scabs. Okay. Scabs picked up, and with seven mana, we'll be online next turn. So if Glory were to just, you know, go pretty big here, um, he would have a way to answer it. As as effectively get rid of all the Librams, too, if they were to be loaded up. Okay. Also has Rush Raw Viper in case Carol does come down to be able to answer that. Feels like everything's checked here from Gabby's perspective. I mean, Glory just drew one. I mean, Paladins are known for having these these hands that sometimes get all minions or all spells, but this is one of the worst I've ever seen in that regard. Like, just not a single, not even an out to play towards for most of this game. Yeah. Which is fair because he did play turn four alignment last game. And then draw Anaconda. Come on, balance. You know. Nobody tell Gabby that they think that um, Glory got an unlucky hand in game three. Yep. And this is such a good uh, sequence for Gabby as well because he gets the discount on his hand, but then also gets the Octobot and the Ethereal Aug Merchant back. Um, Glory didn't go all in on the Trog, knowing that Scabs was a possibility with how many cards Gabby had left. Uh, but needed to at least present a threat in case it wasn't there. So I think just smart play overall. And for now, Glory's just going through the motions, but he, he should know that this game is <laughs> is essentially books. done. Yep. Gabby would take a colossal mess up uh, for Gabby here, but he's already got a hand discounted. Um, he also has the Scabs Hero Power to discount it even further. He's got minions on the board to uh, trade in these 4-2s, which... You know, he, he doesn't need the damage from the board too. He needs the board space more than anything. Yeah, he's going to get through this whole deck. He's going to play the Gurots. You all know the drill by now. And if you don't, where have you been? Welcome back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Welcome back. This deck's been around for like six months. Yep. Oh. Remember when we started with this deck, TJ? We had sharks and coins, and it all looked kind of awkward and difficult to play. <laughs> it was very, it was very hard. <laughs> like, and you had so much for your deck that was just terrible. You you would pass your turn with like six coins and an auctioneer in hand. <laughs> you had fun. no way to gain tempo from anything. You're like, well, my opponent has minions, so I guess I'm just going to play this three four that gives my opponent a coin so they can get even more tempo. Uh, but yeah, nice uh, clean game of uh, Guru Rogue for, for Gabby there yeah. to at least put him on the board in the series, right? Um, still could be tough for him, all things considered. Uh, Paladin, you know, maybe not the strongest deck in the field. It's been drawing bans uh, uh, from a lot of players, but I think a lot of players also have had decks fill or lineups filled with combo decks, but with no Rust Rod Viper. So they're like, okay, well, if Carol does come down, I lose the game. Um, but uh, Gabby does have uh, the Rush Rock Viper is ready to go, so he's okay with leaving it up. Um, but again, I, I do feel like um, Glory's still in, in a good spot here, even though Gabby was able to get himself on the board. Yeah, the Demon Hunter in particular going to be a tough time for Gabby. I've got myself thinking back now, TJ. Like, you came to me before one of the Americas broadcasts, like, hey, have you seen this new Rogue deck? It's, it's not got sharks anymore. It's got all these stupid one drops, and it's really good fun. But I'm not, I'm both was like, is it any good? We're like, ah. 
you'd been winning with it. It's like, I was like, well, how could this be good? It's just a me deck, surely. <laughs> Here I we mean, are. <laughs> if I'm winning with it, you know it's not a meme deck, right? Um, or it's the the ultimate meme deck. Those are the only two. <laughs> <laughs> Your own built, homebrewed meme yeah. deck. TJ Sanders special. It's literally a full meme deck, like unplayable except for, you know, uh, by me. Or it's an actually good meta deck. Like if it's a tier two deck or a tier three deck, um, then... I can't win with it, so. <laughs> All right, Gabby, moving on to Face Hunter. So Face Hunter, it's a Trog deck versus Trog deck. This is Here what we we've go. been waiting the entire tournament to see is Trog versus Trog. Someone's um, gonna get Trogged for sure in this one. It's gotta happen. Yeah, and the ideal situation is both are Trogged at the same time. That's when it gets cool. What, what's so cool about it? Um, it's because... <laughs> <laughs> like, if you try and buff your trog, you summon more trogs for your opponent, and then if they try and buff their trog, then they summon more trogs. And then, before you know it, you have a board full of trogs. Or you're looking at two, like, aggressive decks that are doing nothing <laughs> because they, they don't, don't want to give their, <laughs> their opponent more trogs. Uh, it can sometimes be a little bit awkward, and I'm excited to see how you know two good players would navigate that situation. But it's a chance that we may not see Trog versus Trog, right? Um, the decks aren't 100% uh, reliant on that card in order to win. It's just a nice little benefit. Okay, we got a Trog on one side, and it's on the play. He who Trogs first, Trogs longest. Or something. <laughs> I'm sure that's a phrase. <laughs> not. That's, I think that's pretty accurate. Obviously, there's a slight favor. I mean, I think the Hunter's a slight underdog in the matchup, but in terms of the actual, the, the trogging, I think it's it gets the early advantage because the Hunter can actually remove the opposing trog, whereas the Paladin has to sort of look at it. Oh, it's there. We've got trogs. Okay. Here we go. Who has the better trog follow-up now is the, is the biggest question. Um, so... Gabby can give Divine Shield, but no buff right now. And Glory does have the. Well, mount. he can, he can kill it with the uh, Og Merchant instead, which seems like a better plan. Sure. Yep. Now it's one trog versus no trogs. Oh, uh, now the trog is protected. Blade Master Shamro could be a big deal here, though. Wait, to read these. How many buff cards does Gabby actually have? It's a few, right? Two. He's got Adorable Infestation, Doggy Biscuit, and uh, Rammy Mount. Yeah, it's six. The yeah. one in four chance to make this trog not game winningly big, but terrifying all the same. Thought that was a Rammy Mount for a second. No, did I? No, I did. All right. I made this. How is he going to protect the Trog now? I if I'm Samuro, he's not, is the answer. Yeah. Oh, Samuro's going to be so good. Yep, the Glory he sits up. Just he's like, okay, yes, I dealt with the Trog. <laughs> and all the other cards, whilst on 25. <laughs> Yep, well, Gabby's got to know. Yep. I mean, the way his hand was panning out, like, there really wasn't an option for him to play around that in any meaningful way. So now the game plan is switch to, all right, <laughs> got to kill him. Oh, Ice Trap, okay. No meaningful follow-up here. I mean, there's some damage, obviously, but... That's not meaningful against the Hunter in particular. Yeah. So, uh, Gabby's going to get to Rhino something. That's nice. <laughs> Glory actually doesn't have anything really meaningful next turn either. 
Yeah, but if he gets, if this gets, you know, later in the game, right, He's he's got the power, but uh, he only has the one Libram discount at the moment. Knight of Anointment's not that great of a draw. Right now, he doesn't even have a way to deal with this this Rhino, and Gabby's got just damage for days in hand with Aimshot Quickshot. Um, on seven, that's ten damage. So next turn, if you just think Rhino connects face with a hero power, unless Glory heals, that's lethal on turn seven for Gabby. Yep, ice trap number two. Played around a little, best you can. There's a lot of damage from Gabby. Yep. So Gabby's got lethal in at most three turns, even if we assume that yeah, the, the damage from the board just stops at that point when the taunts go up. Quickly. <laughs> I strap again. Put it back. An extra point of damage can be worked in here from the adorable. Is it a relevant no. point? <laughs> no, he, he's got enough damage next turn. He knows that, uh, uh, Libram Pope can't come down because um, there's only one Libram reduction, right? If I'm remembering correctly, it was just the a single Aldor attendant that was played. And so he's just going to load up the damage. Quick shot and hero power next turn. Gabby's clapping already. I think he knows that there are zero outs here uh, for Glory. And I think that means, Neil, we're going to a game five. Game five. Told you. Start of the show. This is going to game five. No other way. I have no idea who's going to win it, though. I haven't looked that far ahead in the script. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is like the ultimate battle of the of the scripts, right? Because it's <laughs> Gabby, who everybody's like, yeah, he's going to be a world champion someday. Um, you know, best results out of any individual player over the course of the year. And versus Glory, <laughs> who also has some of the best individual results for a player over the course of the last year and is the reigning world champion yeah. so it's like <laughs> which script do i choose yeah. and uh even blizzard is still deciding right because hey, just five, juggling like, <laughs> it's like, yeah, he's like he's got two buttons in front of him he's got gabby glory <laughs> right he's sweating and he's just he's like, like oh. He's just like, I, I don't know. I need. I'll pull this one this game. I'll pull this one this game. Um, not to take away, right? Uh, we're obviously uh, joking around, um, but you know, just at the uh, <laughs> expense of uh, these players are actually really good. And there's a lot that goes into these games. There's no magic lever that makes you a good Hearthstone player. It takes time and work, and both these players have quite obviously uh, put that in. And I think it's only fitting that with players of this caliber that we go to a game five in a semi-final of the World Championship. Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to take at least a few seconds to go, hey, let's be serious for a minute. All right, done. Back to normal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's my one serious statement for this match, okay? I'm done. <laughs> That's it. We're back. To it's only game five. I do remember in one tournament, you and I, some years ago now, got to a, an important game five and didn't mention the game once. We won't do that today. We'll talk about the game a little bit. Yeah. That's why they don't put us on finals, Neil. <laughs> Except for our own region, because we have to. But even then, they were reluctant. They're like, we're going to bring in two other casters to cast America's finals. <sighs> um, but last matchup is going to be the Paladin versus the OTK Demon Hunter. So this one is quite interesting. Um, let me just uh, take a look real quick. Um, I imagine there is one there. Yep, there's a Rush Rot Viper in the list for Gabby. So that's a necessity, I feel like, in this matchup. Yeah. Um, Trog is going to be a big deal, right? Um, or potentially a big deal. TK Demon Hunter is one of the decks that can, you know, just wait a couple turns and then, and, and you know, blow it up with Moarg plus things or Talented Arcanist plus things. Um, but yeah, we Glide, not face. really as useful in this uh, particular matchup as we've seen in many of the other matchups throughout the tournament. And the pressure's on, right? It's, we, we talked about this back in Grandmasters, but the Paladin just starts off putting down, forgetting the truck for now, but the normal build, it puts down fairly meaningless threats, but they're irritating, you want them to go away. 
And if you deal with those, it just puts down something bigger next time and something even bigger the turn after that. So at some point, Gabby's going to have to say, you know what? This is my clock. I've got two turns to kill you. Hit me for 12. I don't care because the early game went OK. So going to be interesting to see how he uses a slight measured response at the start into closing his eyes and just trying to combo out. Yeah, and I think that last game sort of showed um, kind of the weaknesses of Lever Paladin as a whole, right? It's a deck that can do a lot of things. Um, it, it can have early aggressive starts um, and, and be an aggro deck. It can play these super long games where it uses the Librams continuously going back in hand to grind their opponent out. Um, and it can play anti-combo in the form of the, the Carrial Hero uh, and the weapon, uh, which can block a lot of damage. Um, but it, it needs to draw the correct side of the deck. Oh, oh he do Tron plus buffs! It's just, just every buff! He has every buff imaginable! Like, he had nothing and Gabby had everything, and that just changed around with one pickup. Now, like you say, he's got all the buffs. Gabby's going to have to just take this apart very slowly. And okay, he, he's going to deal with it on turn speed. one. This is smart. Yep. Yep. Whoo! Okay. Oh. And not only is it smart, TJ, it could be absolutely ruinous for Glory here. Yeah, because uh, he's got nothing. And Gabby's follow-up is actually good. He's got Quest into Sigil with a Spectral Sight in Outcast position. Picks up second Sigil. So he's got two turns of Quest completion just with that, right? Um, just needs like a single extra draw to go alongside the Brush Rot Viper tradable. And uh, he's looking good. So, um... Okay. Trog thwarted. So she's going to come in though. There's now only one fell scream left. You don't beat this paladin with minions. You're going to have to use that fell scream. So going to be very low on health gain. Going to have those two immolation auras somewhere in the deck. It's going to be tusk point. piercer. Picks up tusk piercer as well. Just like ideal quest completion status here for Gabby. Uh -huh. Ilganoth is going to be a little awkward. It's going to get in the way of the glide, so if Gabby wants to glide later, he's going to have to do it from the right-hand side, which... It's just so difficult. It seems like, oh, why don't you just play the card you draw? Well, then it usually puts another card there. It's Libra and Paladin, right? So, like, there's no... There's not a, a huge incentive to glide your opponent as well. You're normally just worried about uh, your own fair. game plan, unless you have fair. a heavy read or there's a bunch of Librams in hand. Um... So, like, maybe he just even glides right now uh, to just yep. kind of reset. Needs to plan what he wants to do with his spectral sight. There is the incentive to to glide, obviously. Keep the spectral going. Pleasure doing take this. a look at what he picks up this turn first. Down to 17 is ready. All right, don't worry about the 17. That's, that's changed. Yep. <laughs> Going to be able to contest this. And uh, he's dumping a lot of cards from his hand, so it looks like Glide is going to be the uh, final quest line completion tool for Gabby going into the next turn. At 22, only one power on board. Uh, I mean, it's looking okay for him at the moment. Uh, the biggest thing is how much power can Glory load up over the next two turns, right? The biggest thing about these sort of aggro midrange decks in order to stop uh, OTA Demon Hunter is, can you load up enough power going into the turn where Kurtris is going to be played in order to disincentivize the Demon Hunter from actually playing Kurtris? Because that's the most awkward turn. Um, the one awkward part for Gabby is, like you mentioned, there is only one Fell Screen Blast left. There is the Immolation Ores, though. Uh, so that plus, you know, the a redundant Moarg or Guild Trader that's in the deck could be um, enough to d deal with a big board in order to buy more time before the combo is complete. This is a good amount of power, good right? Yes. Power on board is going to get to push three. So power over two turns is the name of the game here to try and prevent the Kurtris. And something we have learned, like you're saying now, is, is preventing the Kurtris because if there's any glimmer at all that you might not die, you just play the Kurtris. 
uh, something we've learned time and time again. Delaying it usually just means things get worse, not better. So if you yeah. can't play it, if Glory can prevent him from playing it on the next turn Demons. because of the threats of damage, Demons. actually it just never gets played. Yeah. Double checking any creative plays. Um, <laughs> just, just always got to be able to keep an eye as Demon Hunter, not so much against Paladin, but do I play my Ilgin off? <laughs> Again, it gets Paladin not so much because they'll just put down an 8 8 and then you've lost. But. Can't see the results here of the Illidari studies. I'm curious. Good narc? What's he cooking up? He, he can't. He's going to shuffle a Gnarg into his deck? Huh. So, did he miscount or something? Did he think he could kill something? I don't think so, but maybe they were just all garbage. If they're all garbage, maybe he just had to take the cheapest garbage. Yeah. Because he gets into Gnarg back. So now Gabby's got seven power loaded up. He's going to bring Gabby down to 12. So he, can put, he needs to put five more power on board, which he can. He can indeed. And does it stick? It sticks, right? There's no way of taking enough damage off the board for Gabby. Yeah. To be able to play Curtis. <laughs> He's gonna have to fell screen blast. My revenge. I could... Ay yeah yeah. All right, that's the last fell screen blast. Wow. So three damage needed. Won't. Wait. Am I counting this wrong? Yeah, he's got 13 right now. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. Well, there it is. Good luck, Gabby. You've got to find the play of your life, and it's going to involve yep. a course of leeches somewhere along the way. Yeah, so he's got an eye beam left. Um, but that's it. <laughs> like... <laughs> That's the healing. He could discover another one with Illidari studies. Any leech? Uh, Any Chaos leech. leech. Okay. Yep. Potions, blast, I got it all. Um. Relation over? So he can aura away. Did he, yeah. he? I grow impatient. Um, so I don't think that was the plan for Gabby. Uh, he just drew. I think he didn't realize that the guild trader was part of the acrobatic sequence. Right. Um, he thought that he was just going to be able to play guild trader. Arc, I guess. I don't know. But now has to go for something a little bit different, and that's I beam used. Uh, this is <laughs> this is not looking good, to be quite honest. It's looking better than it was two cards ago. Let's go with that. Two cards okay. ago, he was dead, sure. and now he's alive. Yeah, he but is. this is where Glory can just kind of grind him out of the game. He knows it's going to be very difficult for Gabby to actually piece yeah. together enough damage. It's going to stay at 30 health. Gabby's only got seven cards remaining. And he's, I mean, not only has he got to deal with not dying every turn, he's actually got to find a way to win the Hearthstone game, which is looking... I mean, it's looking impossible, but it's Gabby, so maybe he'll find something I can't see. A measured annoyance there. Six cards left. Talented Arcanist, Moarg. So if he can get Talented Arcanist more Guild Trader with Chaos Leech. Or, I mean, right now he's going to die. <laughs> yep. So that's like the yep. biggest thing. And Chaos Leech is the only Lifesteal card he has remaining. <gasps> the Gnarg. Uh, he's drawn it yeah, and I, times or something. I th he's dead. He's just going to throw away his cards. I think that's it. Pleasure doing business. 
Looking like it, TJ. He's got nothing left. Yeah, he's just gonna deck himself out. Spend as much time, and there it is. The plot armor not strong enough because Glory's plot armor is thicker. He's moving on to the finals. Second finals in a row for Glory, our reigning world champion. He's one match away from being the first player in Hearthstone's history to win back-to-back -back world championship finals. Insane run so far. And to be fair, that means he's the first player in Hearthstone history to get to back-to-back -back finals. He's just got to do the last bit to make it sound even better, but already a remarkable achievement and looking good for it as well, to be fair. This, this isn't some sort of crazy hot streak. He's been playing as well as anyone in the tournament. I think the Banterface has also been playing incredibly well, but he, he is looking good for it. He's, he's come right at the right time. And he's got one yeah. more match to win to repeat champion. I don't think we ever thought that would happen in Hearthstone. I really don't. No, I, I mean, it is like you have to be a fantastic player. And, you know, to, to be quite honest, even then, the odds are still astronomically low because there's going to be other great players in the world. Uh, and Gabby is one of them. And I think that, you know, uh, Gabby, like it's it, it's tough to to say goodbye at this stage. I, I, you know, I feel like Glory versus Gabby felt like two names that you put in the finals for players like ideal finals for the World Championship, just because of how strong both players have been over the past year. And we can't stress that enough. Gabby has had an incredible year, one of the best, if not the best, year for a single player that we've ever seen. And the hype is the hype is real, and it's deserved uh, for him as a player. He's very young. Very 